Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. And he, and he, Chef, put a yoga mind. And then the oppressor, the white man, gonna put a yoke of what? A yoga mind? On what? Upon that neck. Upon that neck until when? Until he have destroyed thee. You know when you got a dog, right? You put a leash on a dog, a collar, you train him. Then you take the leash off once he's trained. Because you know he ain't gonna do what you not tell him. That's the same thing the white man did. He took the, neck, the chains off our neck once he knew that we were some good trained dogs. Because he knew we weren't going to rebel against him. But guess what? We're rebelling now according to the Bible. Because we out here teaching you who you truly are. This is an act of rebellion. This is an act because that woman out here said she's revolutionary. This is true revolution. Right? That's right. Coming into repentance of this Bible. When you occupy yourself in drill music, killing each other, or I want to have sex with this sister, that sister, guess what? Bad things going to come to you. You attract what is in your mind. Out of, the, out, of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You can speak life and death into your life. You know what I'm saying? So you got to what? Change your mind so you can change what comes out. So then you can change the conditions around you. Read verse 2. Depart from the unjust. Depart from the unjust free and iniquity shall turn away from thee. So in order for you to have better fortune in your life, you have to start doing good. So that bad stuff can turn away from you. Give me Acts 3 and 19. So look, brothers. So what's your what nationality? Are you? You're Ethiopian, what about you? African American, what about you? Ghanaiana? Alright? Ghana. Alright, so check this real quick. Ghana. Ghana. That's where that's close to. West Africa. West Africa. Okay, all praise to the most high. Let me do Deuteronomy 28, 15. Let's deal with that first. So I'm going to pull out a few scriptures because the Bible is its own DNA kit. We don't need to go to the white man's science to learn where we come from. The Bible depicts that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. This is how we know that we are the Israelites of going to the Bible. Read. But it shall come to bed. So Moses was in the wilderness, right? After he brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt. And God had to reintroduce how to walk and move again. Because we learned the ways of the Egyptians. You know what we was doing in Egypt? We was having sex with animals. We was having sex with our mothers. We was drinking blood. Huh? That, well, that was that was after the flood. That was after the flood. So we had God had to re, he had to get our minds right. So he gave the laws back to Moses to give to us. So God said, look, essentially, look, keep my laws and good things gonna happen to you. That's right. If you don't keep my laws, bad things is gonna happen to you. Watch you gonna say it. Read. But it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do. All his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What's your name, bro? Ivan. What's up, man? You look familiar, bro. Yeah. Okay, that's probably what it is. Man. All praise to the most high. So God just said, look, if you break the household rules, I'm going to punish you. That's what he just said in verse 15 in the nutshell. So I'm going to give you some curses. Give me verse 46. Deuteronomy 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So remember, I said this is our DNA kit. These curses are going to be upon us for a sign. In order for you to know where you're going, you need a sign, right? It's just like what? When you're about to catch a cold, what is the sign that you catch, that you feel? What is the symptom? Cough and sneeze. What is the sign that you normally get when you know you're about to catch a cold? Runny nose. What you got, bro? So if you're about to catch a cold, what is a sign that normally happens? What is a symptom that happens in your body? Your head hurts, right? So God said these curses are a sign. And don't go nowhere. You're going to leave, you're going to leave. So look, check this out. I, told you. I got you. Look, check this out. Read it again. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So these, these right here, this is a sign. I was going into slavery as a sign. 
We in it right now. We in it right. We in slavery right now, bro. You just went to jail. Hey, I got you. But some brothers get shot down in the streets by the police. Some of it when they fall. So God said these curses gonna be upon you for a sign. Read verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore. So we have to serve our enemies. Now, when it says serve your enemies, it doesn't mean, look, look, here, that's a, here's a plate for you to eat. This doesn't necessarily mean that. It means, look, you're going to have to work for them. You're going to have to, what, pay them money in order to get a service. Because this world belongs to us. That's right. So now, in order for you to, what, have a livable wage, have to take care of yourself and take care of your family, you have to serve your enemies. We don't. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemies, uh, which the Lord shall sin against thee in hunger. So you have to serve your enemies for food. When it says in hunger, that means for food. Now, when you want to go get something to eat, where you go to get something to eat at? Anywhere, right? Who owns those places? White people, white Jewish, who else? Rich black people. Okay, so let's just let's just go with rich black people. When rich black people have to go buy their supplies, their inventory, so they can produce the service for you, who do they go to? Rich white people. So the Bible says your enemies you're gonna have to go to for what? Hunger! For hunger, for food. So whenever you want to feed yourself or your family, you gotta go to your enemy, to your oppressor. Read on. So when you want what? Water. Some of y'all may drink alcohol beverage. That has water in it. You gotta go to them. Free. And in nakedness. And for clothing. When you want clothing for your body. Socks, drawers, a hat, jacket, pants, whatever. A belt. All of those things you gotta go to your enemy for. And what else? And in one of all things. You went to school? High school. High school, right? Who owned those high schools? Bring it up. White man, right? All right, so look, check this out. You got an ID? Who you go to to get that from? Bring it up! White man, right? All right, anything you think of, you got to go to your enemy. I don't care what it is. You could go to a black-owned store. You could go to a black-owned whatever. But when it when, when it all comes down to them providing inventory in their stores, they got to go to their, their oppressors and get that. Bring it up! The service for you. Whatever commodity it is, they got to go to the white man or the oppressor to provide a service for you to, for, as an end user, as a consumer to, to buy. It's just as simple as that. And what? And look, and here's else what the DNA kit said. The Bible is a DNA kit. It gives you signs to let you know who you are. That's right. Because you said you didn't know who you are. And I'm about to prove that you are an Israelite according to the Bible. Based off what we're reading in this. Read it again. Who made that Bible? King James was authorized the Bible, but we wrote it, our ancestors. How do we know for a fact that we wrote it? How do we know that the white man didn't write it? I'm about to prove it to you right now. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck now, until he yeah, have to Hold on, hold on. You see these yokes of iron on your neck? You got a cell phone? Put, go to Google and put yokes of iron on your neck. Now, if the white man wrote this book, right? If you wrote this book, why did he leave these things in there? Right. Why did he leave these things in to make there? Make himself look bad. Okay. Right, just to make himself look like the devil because he calls himself the devil in his life. But when you go to the churches, excuse me. Come on over here, bro, excuse me. When you go to the white, when you go to the churches, the churches, they say, this is God in the churches. But in this book, it says Jesus looks like this. That's right. Why would the white man leave that in there if he wrote this book? It don't make no sense, right? Because I hear that all the time. Man, it's the white man's book. Why? Because it was given to us as slave. It was reintroduced to us, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Read that again. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies. You're going to serve your enemies. Huh? Which the Lord shall sin against thee. The Lord shall sin against thee. And hunger. For food. And in thirst. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in one of all things. And in one of all things. So when you look that up, what did you see? Put that so. Yoke of iron, right? Read that. And he. And he. Shall put a yoke of iron. And in the oppressor, the white man going to put a yoke of what? A yoke of iron. 
On what? Upon that neck. Upon that neck until when? Until you have destroyed thee. You know when you got a dog, right? You put a leash on the dog, a collar, you train him. Then you take the leash off once he's trained. Because you know he ain't gonna do what you not tell him. That's the same thing the white man did. He took the, neck, the chains off our neck once he knew that we were some good trained dogs. Because he knew we weren't gonna rebel against him. But guess what? We're rebelling now according to the Bible. Because we out here teaching you who you truly are. This is an act of rebellion. This is an act because that woman out here said she's revolutionary. This is true revolution. Right? That's right. Coming into repentance of this Bible. Forsaking the old ways and now coming into the ways of God. That is true revolution. You understand? Give me verse 68. What's up, bro? What's your name? Troy. Come on in here, Troy from the rain, bro. Hey, look, check this out, Troy. Check this one verse out. Hey, Troy, check this out, bro. Troy, Troy, you with me, bro? All right, so look, we went into slavery on slave ships. Did you know that was documented in the Bible? Uh, yeah, the tribe. That's we the Jews. We the Jews, right? No, we, the, we are the real Jews. All right, that's what I'm reading. All right, read that, verse 68. Look at Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. James, check this out, James. Come over here on this side. Hey, James, remember what happened to us, right? Slave, slave ships, right? Remember that? They taught us that in school, right? So look, hey, yo, brother. Hey, check this out, bro. What's your name? George, right? George, check this out. We, we talk about slave ships in the Bible. Read that verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So look, read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So show me what Egypt means. Bring it out. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. So the Bible says I'm going to bring you into Egypt again with ships. Now, you know about the story of Moses, right? Tell me about the story of Moses. Okay, and we came out of Egypt, right? So look, we walked into Egypt at first, right? So if we walked why would we need to go back on slave ships? Right. Bring it out. You know what I'm saying? So that's that you know Egypt is synonymous for slavery. Right. It's just a, it, that's what it means. Right. And the Bible is going to... Hey, I like you, bro. You me and you there. Read it again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Huh? I am the Lord thy God. So God says, I am the Lord thy God. Read. Which have brought thee uh, out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Which means what? Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage or out of the house of slavery. That's what captivity, that's what bondage means. Right. Slavery. So go back to Deuteronomy 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God said I'm going to bring you back into slavery again on slave ships. On slave ships. We was packed in like sardines. Bring it out. You understand that? You have women, what, having babies, blood coming dripping down on them. All on brothers. They was coming on their period. People were dying. And they was on there for years. Baggage coming out of them, making us sick. These are the things that happened to us. Why? Because we didn't want to listen to God. James. James. Sir, we have to get back to God's laws. You understand? Jews. Check this out. What color is Christ? Black. What color is Jesus? Bronze hair, blue, right? Yep. All right. So Jews. What color is Jesus? No, what no, no. Tell me what you told me at first. It's cool. There's no wrong answer, bro. You say who? Yellow. Okay. All right. Cool. What do you say? Jesus is around that same time. Really, Jesus is your solar plexus. He who? Jesus is your solar plexus. Solar plexus, okay. He rolls at 32. That's 32 to bread. Okay, I got you, I got you. You say Jesus is what? Standing bronze hair's wool. Bronze hair's wool, right? Okay. All right. Hey, bro, excuse me. What's your name? Jabal. Nice meet you. What color is Jesus? Black. So we got black, skin like bronze, woolly hair, and you say yellow. Okay. What about you? I say pale. Pale? What about you, bro? What color is Jesus? Black. 
What color is Jesus? Come on in from out of the rain. What color is Jesus? I guess black. Black? Okay, let's see what the Bible says. Read it. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Verse 1. Verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So, revelation means to reveal. So this is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Read verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. All right, now check this out. Excuse me, brother. What's your name again? I'm sorry. Javon. Do you mind taking your, your, your hood off? I just, I just want to be use an example. All right, so check his hair out, right? So he said his head and his hairs, meaning his beard and his hairs was what? Well, white like wool. So when you say wool, that's a texture. I mean, Javon, when you rub your hair, what it feel like? Feel like wool. That's right. Feel like wool. Feel your hair, bro. Jules. That's woolly texture. Read it again. His head and his hair were white like wool. So he had white woolly hair. White woolly hair. So this is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Not this guy. Not this yellow guy. This red, white guy. This is the devil, actually. This is the Christ. That's right. This is the Messiah. This is our Savior. This is our big brother. Read on. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes uh -huh. was a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet like a divine bread. Uh -huh. As if they burned in a furnace. So you were right. He had brass skin. Meaning brown skin. It was so dark. It looked like it burned in a furnace. So Christ would look like you. That's you right. Know? Christ would look like you. You know how powerful that is, bro? That's powerful because a lot of our brothers don't see Christ in each other. That's why we kill and shoot each other down. That's why sometimes the woman disrespects us or we disrespect the woman. That's why we divide it. That's why the other nations could come down and treat us like trash. Because we don't see God in us. But God said that he's just like you. So you have to build your self-esteem up and be like, hey, I'm mighty on this earth. That's right. I'm no longer just a nigga. Bring it out. You understand that? You have to take back your heritage. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 